and you. Feeling amazing on this Monday, Monday, Monday. It's great to be back with you here live around the world on the beautiful, beautiful Twitch, as well as Clubhouse, because you know that we do this live. My name is Uj. Pleasure to be here with you. We're going to blow you a kiss because I love you. And I'm glad that you're here with us talking to you about so many things in the markets. I mean, just an amazing time to be alive. So shout out to you for waking up today. And we want to give all the honor and praise to all of those who didn't make it to today. Of course, good morning to you. I talked with you about the markets twice a week. We were off last week because I was out there in the field doing some amazing things. I actually was attending this really beautiful uh, seminar. See this ring right there? See that ring? Mm, yeah, I got that ring at that seminar. I did, yes. Uh, it was the uh, seminar, the Men's Leadership Seminar, it's called. And I want to pull up a photo of me and my brothers, my brothers where we were doing our ting, ting, ting. Yes, we were. We were doing our thing. And, uh, you know, I'm super proud of everybody who attended because ultimately... You have leaders from all around the country, all around the United States, people who've traveled the world, people who are from Canada as well. You have all of this uh, coming together in order to not only be leaders in the world, but leaders of self. You may be wondering, well, what is leader of self? What does that mean? It means a lot, actually. And it's something that's very important because if you don't know where you're going, you can't lead anybody else. If you don't love yourself, you can't love anybody else. So I'm just super proud and super glad to have shared this amazing time with these uh, wonderful gentlemen. Love them very well. MLS class 113. Uh, shout out to Size Seminars and shout out to everybody. I talk with you sometimes about this picture behind me. This picture behind me right here is me standing on a pole in, uh, in California. And that was the life success course that I took with Size Seminars last October. And now in March, you're in March with me, and uh, I decided to take the men's leadership seminar. I took action on that. I got this ring out of it. And in addition to the bling, yeah, in addition to that bling that you see there, I also got some amazing knowledge. Um, just, you know, being able to share, mastermind, and uh, grow with others, an amazing thing. So you didn't see us last week because of that. I was out uh, in California at the ranch once again. Uh, learning some tings, but I'm back with you now. So let's get to the markets. What's happening out there? Well, I want to talk with you about NFTs, but before we get into NFTs, I want to just uh, show you exactly what's happening in the crypto market right now. I actually unloaded some Bitcoin last night. Yes, Mr. Hodel unloaded some Bitcoin last night. You may be wondering, well, why'd you do that? What are you thinking? I mean, 61K. When I was off doing the seminar last week, uh, it was no Wi-Fi, hardly any use of your phone. So you were out there and you were really out there. And you were being present and you were being in nature and you were being with these lovely people and you were learning things. So you weren't like, hey, what's happening with crypto? Like there wasn't a lot of that. It was just being present and being there. So when I finally checked the Bitcoin price uh, last Friday, I was like, 61,000? What? I mean, the price was 50000 to start the week. So you saw a 20% move in Bitcoin and a 20% move in a week in Bitcoin. Yeah, for me, that is, it's a sell signal of sorts. Now, it's not like I've unloaded all of my Bitcoin, but I did unload some to take some profits here at this level. As I've told you many, many times here on the show, you're looking at a very overextended Bitcoin and uh, Bitcoin could go to 100K this year. I mean, the way it's moving, it's more likely that that it will happen than not likely. However, you are seeing such an overextension that you're likely to see, in my opinion, a retracement, at least a brief retracement, maybe a flash crash, so to speak, where you'll see the price come down to the moving averages because it's way, way high above the moving averages right now. And um, once it happens, right, you're seeing the Bitcoin price right here. I'm just pointing to it right here, about 56000 uh, once you see that flash crash happen, then you'll see Bitcoin go back up to you know crazy levels as we're seeing them now. But to see it go from about fifty six thousand at the time of talking with you today down to thirty thousand, very very plausible to me. And I'm going to show you again one more time. I know I do this a lot. I know some of you think I'm crazy, and you're like, dude, you keep saying it's going down. 
and it's clearly going up. Yeah, I get it. Just saying, you know, going by fundamentals and what I know about um, technical analysis. For those of you wizards out there who say technical analysis doesn't work in crypto, you're more than welcome to believe that and think that. I'm going to dance with who I came with. Technical analysis, TA got me into this game. It's gotten me uh, paid to a large degree, so I'm going to continue to dance who I came with, which is technical analysis. So I'm going to show you briefly here on Bitcoin how things are very overextended, and then I'll talk with you about NFTs. Remember, you and I are live right now on Twitch, on Clubhouse. If you're watching the restream on YouTube, hello to you too. You can leave a uh, comment in the chat right now. Send me your questions. Anything you want to know about uh, the big old cryptocurrency, definitely let us know because we want to hear from you. The more you know, the more you grow. So make your voice heard. Say something. Say something. Say something. And we'll get you. Uh, we'll get you going. Yeah, that's what we want to do here. So we're going to take a look at the crypto price, just Bitcoin specifically, before we talk about NFTs. NFTs. <laughs> Such a fun thing to say. And you've had a lot of people asking me as of late. My buddy Lou texted me yesterday about NFTs. My buddy Lainey about a week and a half ago just talking about NFTs. And neither one really are experts in cryptocurrency. So uh, when I see the mainstream, because I would consider them the mainstream, you would consider them the mainstream. They're not experts like uh, me or maybe yourself. So when you see people ask and say, what's up with these NFTs? And they're kind of, you know, they're not in the, in the know or in the middle of what's happening. It makes you wonder, because hmm, I, think, I think something's going on out there that we ought to be discussing. So uh, let's take a look at the Bitcoin price. Do all just on the chart, because you know, you know what the price is right now. So let's just take a look at the chart. And uh, as we get things going, hope you've had your coffee. Hope you've done your morning routine to make sure that you're cogent, that you're present, that you're doing everything that you need to do in order to win, 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 win. We want you to win. We want you to win today. Because my Zoom and the sharing of the pages is a little strange this morning. Or maybe it's just me. Probably just me. Here we go. Showing you the Bitcoin price on the monthly chart. So here you go. You got the price up around here. If you don't know how to read candles, it's okay. I teach you how to read candles in my course, yourbitcoinnow.com. You can take one of my courses. The blue line here is a uh, support level, which is the 12-day moving average. Again, I've talked with you at length about this many times here. And the current price where the 12-day is at is about 26000 27000 so you typically want to see these moving averages closer to the price. If it's way overextended above the price, no harm, no foul, but it's just saying that it's very overbought or that things should turn around. So I'm showing that to you here. So you see how the price is up here, these candles up here. This is the monthly candle for March. See how the moving average is, this blue, this red, and this gold are down here. All right, now let me show you in the stock market before we talk about NFTs, before we talk about NFTs with you. Gonna have a quick look at let's say Google. Okay, so let's take a look at Google. Yes, you see how it is going kind of like if you were hiking this, this would not be a big deal. I mean, it would be a little bit for you if you were hiking this, if you're walking this, you would you know you get a little sweat going, you probably huff and puff a little bit, but it's not out of the realm. And then you see it starts to kind of go a little overextended here, but it's just, it's a lot closer to that blue line than you saw at Bitcoin. It's another good example. Maybe Alibaba would be a good example. Great example here. So you see, and this right here, Fibonacci, I teach you about Fibonacci in my course, yourbitcoinnow.com. Get into one of my courses. So you see how it's just trailing along the blue line, it even comes down below the blue line, it moves bearish here, and then eventually comes above uh, this blue line, which is the 12 day moving average. And now it's just under the 12 day moving average. So this right here is. It's not exactly the most bullish. In fact, you'd want a chart that looks like uh, Google or Bitcoin, really. However, that is showing you kind of what a steady, healthy stock of cryptocurrency would look like, as opposed to this, which is just, I mean, bonkers, 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 as you can see. So in my thinking, you're always going to see some sort of a reversion to the mean. 
And with that said, you're going to see a move eventually down to this blue line here. This blue line, again, is at 27000 Current price right now is at 56000 I'm thinking you'll see a flash crash. When that will happen, I don't know. I mean, you could see Bitcoin go to 100K, especially with all the craziness that you're seeing in the crypto market right now, NFTs are notwithstanding. So a lot of craziness happening in crypto right now. We're going to talk about stock markets with you in just a few. But first, but first, I want to talk with you about NFTs. It's what we came here uh, to chat about with you today. So NFTs, I mean, what is the deal with these things? And again, so many people out of the woodwork coming out saying, dude, what's up with these NFTs? And I'm like, hmm, people are asking about NFTs. Okay, well, I'm guessing that something is percolating out there. And after doing a bit of research, I'm seeing a lot is percolating out there. And, uh, you know, it's very interesting that this stuff is happening, to be honest. Um, you're seeing, now NFTs are nothing new, right? You're only seeing them come into vogue now because a lot of people are making big, big profits off of them. And why are they making big profits off of them? Well, I'm gonna share with you just a little bit about uh, what's happening right now. Uh, there's a really cool article in BBC that I'll read with you, and that will actually make things, make a bit more sense to you, because that's the idea. You wanna simplify things for you so you can understand it. And you may be saying, okay, well, NFT, what does that stand for? NFT. So the letter N, the letter F, the letter T. So NFT stands for non-fungible token. Okay, so here's the BBC article that I just talked to you about. Uh, what are NFTs and why are some worth millions? So what you're seeing right now is you're seeing these tokens, these non-fungible tokens, go from being nothing to worth millions literally overnight. That's what you're seeing happen. You're seeing this happen in the art world. You're seeing it happen with musicians. And uh, Lainey's in the music world. So she's the one who told me that Steve Aoki was doing a lot of NFTs and Blau and these different EDM artists. You were seeing them just jump into NFTs and make millions overnight, just generating millions of dollars. And then you saw my buddy Lou uh, yesterday. He hit me up and said, what's up with crypto art NFTs? Crypto art, like what is going on here? So this is some of the things that you're hearing out there quickly. Uh, and again, this is big right now. So digital only artwork sold at Christie's auction house for $69 million. And uh, the winning bidder will not receive a sculpture, a painting, or even a print because it's only digital, right? So instead of getting the digital artwork, the digital artwork, and I think the digital artwork could show that to you, I think, in the New York Times. Yeah. So here's a detail from Beeple's Every Days. The first 5,000 days are showing this to you here. And uh, this right here, $69 million in addition to um, a few other digital images. And again, digital only. So let's go right quick. You may be saying, I mean, people are buying, people bought basically pictures online for $69 million. Yes, essentially, that's what I'm telling you, uh, but reading the article will make it make a lot more sense. So let's go back to that BBC article, because that one actually pretty, you know, it explains it pretty well and simplifies it. So NFTs are a one-of-a-kind asset in the digital world that can be bought and sold like any other piece of property, but they have no tangible form of their own. So you can't actually touch them with your hands. I like that ring. Woo can't touch them with your hands, but they are property because... They exist, they just only exist in the digital space. So digital tokens can be thought of as certificates of ownership for virtual or physical assets. So a digital token, you can own a token, let's say you have a token in your wallet or you have a token um, that you own, somebody sends you a digital token and says, hey, this right here proves that you own this house. This right here proves that you own this book, right? It's, it's a, it shows you a certificate of ownership only again it's not something tangible that you can touch with your hands it's something that you can only uh, have on the blockchain that you can see virtually so how do nfts work traditional works of art such as paintings and uh, uh they're valuable because they are one of a kind right so you buy the mona lisa or you can't even buy the mona lisa because they're not for sale but you buy different paintings because um they're works of art and works of art become valuable because they just become valuable they're, they're artists who made them 
uh, end up blowing up. Um, collection of uh, collectors believe that this art is valuable, therefore they bid up the price, and therefore the art is more valuable. So traditional works of art such as paintings are valuable because they are one of a kind. But digital files can be easily and endlessly duplicated. You know this. Somebody sells you an MP3, you can just copy paste, right? Send it to somebody else. Somebody sends you a JPEG, you can copy it, duplicate it, no problem, right? Uh, but with NFTs, right? With NFTs, artwork can be tokenized to create a digital certificate of ownership that cannot be bought and sold. And this is because of the blockchain. So as with cryptocurrency, a record of who owns what is stored on a shared ledger is known as the blockchain. The records cannot be forged because the ledger is maintained by thousands of computers around the world. Now, if you don't understand blockchain, really, really easy for you to um, get confused as to how this all works. If you want to understand blockchain, I teach you about it in my course, yourbitcoinnow.com. Jump on for one of my courses and I'll get you learned up. But let's say you know about the blockchain and how it works. Basically, the blockchain is a digital database um, spread out, and this is a database right here of the phone, right? Your phone is a database because it stores phone numbers, it stores applications, and so on and so forth. Uh, the blockchain is a digital database, so it's not held in one place. It's actually held virtually in this virtual space, and as each um, block is created, it links onto the next block, and on each block, you store the actual information. So instead of storing it on a phone, you be stored on a block, each block, as it gets full, links onto uh, the chain, right? So it links together in order to form a chain, and uh, that's how it goes on. The empty block is just kind of hanging out, waiting for the information to get stored. It fills up, it links onto the previous block, and so on, and so on, and so on. So the records cannot be forged because the ledger is maintained by thousands of computers around the world. NFTs can also contain smart contracts that may give the artist, for example, a cut of the future sale of the token. So that's the beauty of the Ethereum blockchain. You can create these NFTs and that's exactly what you're seeing happen. Um, and yes, a lot is going on in regards to that. Now, this is nothing new. Once upon a time, there was a thing called CryptoKitties and I'll talk with you about that in just a few, but let's continue on with NFT. So what's stopping people from copying the digital art you may be saying? I just explained it to you, but here you go. There's nothing copying people, uh, stopping people from copying the original art. You can just make a duplicate of this lovely piece right here. This lovely piece right here, you can make a duplicate of it. You can copy, paste it, do whatever you want, but it just doesn't prove that you own the actual original. So nothing stops you from copying it. Millions of people have seen this artwork that I just showed you, right? That went for $69 million in addition to a few other collections. Uh, but in many cases, the artist uh, retains the copyright of their work so they can continue to produce and sell copies. So even if you uh, copy something, doesn't mean that you own the original. The buyer of the NFT, however, owns a token that proves that they own the original work. So you can copy this right now. You can copy this right now. I can copy this right now and say, oh, I own Beeple's artwork. Same thing that sold for $69 million. I own it too. Just like... Uh, if you know anything about fashion, if you know anything about the Academy Awards and things like that, award shows, you often see, um, let's say, a dress from Versace or you know, a dress from Alexander Wang, something like that. What ends up happening the next day by Monday, because the award shows typically are Sunday, by Monday you see knockoffs, right? And you see how you can buy this $35,000 dress for $350 at Top Shop or I don't know really places to buy clothes like that. Nordstrom, let's say something like that, right? You could buy it for three fifty instead of thirty-five thousand dollars, which is a huge discount. Now, how do you know that that's not a thirty-five thousand dollar dress? Well, you look at the tag. The tag says doesn't say Vera Wang or Alexander Wang or Versace or Marc Jacobs or whomever. It says Nordstrom, right? So it's clear there that one is. Um, a knockoff and one is the original. So with this, how do you know, okay, well, I own this digital piece. Ooh, yes, I made a copy of it and I own it. I put up on my wall, it's amazing, everybody loves it, okay. Well, you know that it's not the original because of that token, right? That token 
shows the certificate of ownership. So the buyer of the NFT token owns that token and they prove that they own the original work, right? So they their digital copy looks just like yours, looks just like mine, but you know that it's not a, a fake because they own that token. So some people uh, compare it to buying an autograph print. So people are paying millions of dollars for token. Yes, they are as wild as it sounds. How much are NFTs worth? In theory, you can tokenize your work. I can tokenize my work. Anybody can tokenize their work as an NFT. Uh, but interest has been fueled uh, by recent headlines of multi-million dollar sales. So you, you're seeing this mania and this bubble basically happening right now in the NFT world. And um, again, like I could say this brush, I'm going to tokenize this brush. And that means that you own this brush. And I'm going to say this token is worth a thousand dollars. So you can pay me a thousand dollars for this token. That means you'll own this brush, literally. And uh, there are people out there who might say, it's crazy. I'm not doing that. And then there's people who say, yeah, I'll do that. And they'll pay a thousand dollars in Ethereum or whatnot. And then they will own this brush and they'll prove, they can prove that they own the brush because they own a token that they paid a thousand dollars for. And that essentially is what gives them ownership of this brush. Uh, my book that just recently came out, you know, I'm a number one best-selling author, 10 ways for you to win the stock market. A new book out now and uh, it's out of paperback. Now uh, the audio book is coming soon. Um, I could sell you this book. I could, let's say autograph this book and say, I want to sell you this book for uh, $10,000 and I'm going to issue you a token to say that you actually bought this book or I could even make a, uh, a digital version that I've digitally autographed because obviously this is an ebook. You see at the top it says an ebook by me. Uh, so I can make an ebook that literally only has my autograph, the only ebook out there that has my autograph. So when you go to Amazon, you can't buy presently an autographed version of my book. But let's say I decide to autograph the book and say, okay, you can't get this on Amazon, you can only get this at yourstocksnow.com or yourbitcoinnow.com. And the book is for $20,000 because it has a graph on it. And you can buy, again, a token that will give you ownership of that book. Now, you may have people say, oh, well, we're just going to replicate the book with your autograph. Great. But that doesn't mean that your replication is worth anything. In fact, it means it's not worth anything because if you don't own that original token, that NFT, that non-fungible token, well, then you don't actually own the book autographed by me digitally. If you're getting a little confused, it's okay because it can be a little confusing, especially if you don't understand the blockchain. But this is just what's happening right now. So on February 19th, an animated GIF of a cat, Nyan Cat, a 2011 meme, sold for $500,000. This is what's happening right now. A few weeks later, uh, Grimes, who's a musician, I believe she's uh, married to Elon Musk, sold some of her digital art for more than $6 million. And it's not just art that is tokenized and sold because Jack Dorsey, the founder of Twitter, uh, promoted an NFT of the first ever tweet with bids hitting $2.5 million. Yes, Jack Dorsey of Twitter uh, promoted an NFT of the first ever tweet. So he made an NFT of the first tweet ever. I believe he was the first one to ever tweet. He was the founder of Twitter. So he made a non-fungible token. So basically you could own the, the own the first ever tweet in the digital space because again in the digital space you can copy and replicate just about anything so your heart's content but that doesn't mean that you have actual ownership so you're able to tokenize things in the digital space and give you the ability to own them insane uh of course they talk about the christie's sale of an nft uh by digital artist people for 69 million dollars it set a new record for digital art uh, but as with cryptocurrency, there are concerns about the environmental impact of maintaining the blockchain. And of course, I teach you about the blockchain in my course, uh, yourbitcoinnow.com. So is this all just a bubble? A day before his record-breaking auction, Beeple, whose real name is Mike Winkleman, told the BBC, I actually do think there will be a bubble, to be quite honest. And I think we could be in that bubble right now. There are many more that are skeptical. David Gerard, author of Attack of the 50-Foot Blockchain, said he saw NFTs as buying official collectible similar to trading cards so you see people paying millions of dollars for things right now 
and it's not to say that they are going to be worth a lot in the future that it's just if they're trading cards and some trading cards may be worth millions you see other trading cards are worth a couple of bucks so you have people buying things right now and they're paying six million dollars 69 million dollars 2.5 million dollars uh, who's to say that these things will retain their value uh, over time so uh, there's some artists absolutely making bank on this stuff it's just that you probably won't yes gerard uh, offers that he also said that people are selling nfts or crypto grifters some of these people so they're basically just jumping on the crypto wave and taking advantage of you having people out there who are willing to cash in on some of this nft craziness so the same guys who always been at it trying to come up with some new form of worthless magic being that they can sell for money a former christie's uh, auctioneer charles also said the concept of buying nfts made no sense and the, the the idea of buying something which isn't there is just strange he said i think people who invest in it are slight mugs but i hope they don't lose their money so um mr Alsop doesn't necessarily believe in the idea of nfts and the idea of the digital space and buying things in the digital space, at least in that respect, which I completely understand. When you try to wrap your head around buying a piece of art, right? This is art. This is a great example, by the way. My new book, which is out now, 10 Ways for You to Win the Stock Market, a number one bestseller, number one bestselling author right here. Uh, this right here, paperback. So paperback books, something that you've seen for a long time. Uh, hardbound books and books where you can, I can smell it, I can touch it, I can see it with my eyes, you know, I can feel it, mm -hmm. yeah, all that and more, uh, because it's something real and at least tangible. Let's say real in, in terms of tangible, right? Um, however, this book is an ebook, also, right? An ebook, yes, an ebook. So, uh, an ebook is an is an electric electronic book, electric book electronic book a digital only book that uh, you can read on your kindle you can read on your ipad you can read on your phone you can read on your computer you can read uh, digitally now you can touch your actual phone you can touch your kindle you can touch your ipad and so on and so forth but you can't touch the book quote unquote right when it's only an ebook because it's electronic it's digital and that essentially is what the dawn of NFTs doing insane and doing so great is all about. Essentially, what you're having is um, the digital space come to the fore where you're able to buy ownership into things, but digitally, right? So um, rather than just being able to buy something and own it and prove that you own it in paperback form, whether it be by contract or whether it be by um, PDF even, right? You can have a digital contract where I do digital contracts all the time as a musician. You make music contracts with different record labels and you have it, um, you sign off on them, yes, but you can also do DocuSign, right? So you don't have to necessarily physically touch it and sign off. You can also do it digitally with DocuSign. So again, it's all digital. Now, you still have, own, you can replicate that too, right? You can take that PDF and just copy it over. Um, but you know, claiming that you have ownership and being able to concretely say that if somebody sends you an MP3 and I own the MP3 and the next person owns the MP3 and you own the MP3 and so on and so forth, how do you prove who owns the original MP3? That is where NFTs come in because it's all stored on the blockchain. It's stored on that digital ledger. It's stored in that digital database. You have a record of who bought it when, and you can verify that this person owned the actual piece of the mp3 or owns the actual mp3 like the original 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 the dawn of this happening right now is is very very exciting at least in the sense that you have the ability now to own things um, in the digital space and to prove that you actually are the original owner very tough to do prior to uh, the technology that you've seen come to the fore with nfts blockchain and otherwise but that is what you're seeing now and yeah, that's, it's an amazing thing. It's definitely an amazing thing. And it's amazing to see uh, all the insanity that's happening out there in the NFT space and in the crypto space as a result. Phenomenal stuff. So shout outs to all of you. I want to just check out that New York Times article real quick as well. And just show that to you. 
I'm getting a lot of questions about NFTs lately and um, something that I'm sharing with my students in the Bitcoin course. Again, you can take the Bitcoin course, you're at bitcoinnow.com. But yeah, um, this article just a few days ago, $69.3 million, Mr. Winkleman, also known as Beeple, uh, sold uh, this about. What is a non-fungible token or NFT? An NFT is an asset verified using blockchain technology in which a network of computer records, transactions, and gives uh, buyers proof of authenticity and ownership. The current boom is mostly for digital assets, including images, GIFs. I always, I always want to say GIF, but I think it's GIF. It's either GIF or GIF. You tell me. Songs or videos. So if you send me an MP4 and I send it to the next person, next person, next person, next person, how do you know who owns the original? You don't know, right? Unless somebody tells somebody, you tell somebody. And you could have somebody on that chain of people just be a liar, right? An NFT actually proves that you own the original video. It's tokenized. You own this token that proves that you own the original and it's verified by the blockchain, that digital database, which has a record and keeps records. So most importantly, NFTs make digital artworks unique and therefore sellable because prior to, you know, digital artworks could just be copied to, you know, to your heart's content. However, now, you can copy, copy, copy. It doesn't mean that you own the original. So now artists, musicians, influencers, and sports franchises are using NFTs to monetize digital goods that have previously been cheap or even free. The technology also responds to the art world's need for authentic authentication whew, and provenance in an increasingly digital world, permanently linking a digital file to its creator. Mr. Winkleman, just boss moves. Uh, so yeah, so the artist was Winkleman, who sold the artwork through Christie's. Uh, it became a thing, right? I mentioned CryptoKitties in late 2017. That was a site that allowed people to buy and breed limited edition digital cats with cryptocurrency. And let's take a quick look at CryptoKitties. Talking to NFTs with you today. Shout out to you uh, with us live on Clubhouse. Yeah, with, you, uh, with us live on Twitch right now. And if you're watching on YouTube, Brother Rooster, Hello to you too. Great to be here with you. So CryptoKitties is a blockchain game on the Ethereum uh, blockchain developed by Canadian studio uh, Dapper Labs. It allows players to purchase, collect, breed, and sell virtual cats. So when you saw CryptoKitties become a thing in 2017, I was like, what? People want to buy cats? Okay. So the game's popularity in December 20. People want to buy digital cats? Okay. The game's popularity in De uh, December 2017 congested the Ethereum network, causing it to reach an all-time high in the number of transactions and slowing it down significantly. So CryptoKitties operates on Ethereum's underlying blockchain, and it's an NFT, yes, uh, unique to each CryptoKitty. So each CryptoKitty is unique and owned by the owner, validated through the blockchain, and its value can appreciate or depreciate based on the market. So CryptoKitties cannot be replicated and cannot be transferred without the user's permission, even by the game's developers. So again, there's an original ownership there. Users can interact with their crypto kitties, having the ability to buy, sell, and sire or breed them. Uh, the crypto kitty art is not on the blockchain and is instead owned by Axiom Zen. The company released some of the art under a new nifty license that lets players use the image of their crypto kitty in a limited way. So, uh, the crypto art is not on the blockchain, just like that digital piece um, that you saw earlier. However, you can prove that you actually own it by having that token, that non-fungible token. The test version of CryptoKitties was unveiled um, back in 2017. The first and highest selling cat was sold for uh, 246 Ethereum, which was 172 $117,000 on that day. I think it's way more now because uh, Ethereum is about two grand. So whoever did that came up, they came up big. I crap, I'm doing math. I think Ethereum right now is two, is about 180 or 1800. So 246 times, ooh, I'm gonna cry when I read this. No, no, no. 246, I'm just doing some quick maths. 246 times, 1800 442,000 as of today so they that person came up and that's again the whole point right that is the whole point people are buying these things with the assumption or with the hope that they're going to go up in value 
that crypto kitty that uh, I was just talking with you about sold for one hundred seventeen thousand uh, dollars at the time of then, which was two hundred forty six ETH. And you've seen Ethereum go up in value. Therefore, you've seen da, 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 the value of the, that piece of art go up in value as a result. Now, I don't know if you can buy that crypto kitty for more than 246 ETH today. It might be worth 500 ETH today. I'm not exactly certain. However, just by going by the baseline, 246 ETH, let's say in four years, there was no inflation um, over the course of the four years in the crypto space for that crypto kitty. You saw it just remain at 246. It's still just because crypto has outpaced the US dollar and fiat currency in terms of value, sort of gaining value over the last four to five years. It's worth triple what it or quadruple nearly what it was worth before. So happy days, happy days. You can only imagine, right? So it's they're saying $69 million that the thing sold for, but if I'm correct. Uh, it was actually sold in Ethereum. It wasn't actually sold in dollars. Um, so if that's the case, if you're actually buying and selling these things, since they're on the blockchain, if you're actually buying and selling these things in cryptocurrency, in Ethereum, that is, and you see the value of crypto go up over time, which I do believe we will see, man, oh, man, there are some high flying for this thing to go because that 69 million, I mean, you know, Ethereum goes up tenfold. You bought it for 69 million. And now, you know, that same thing in, worth in Ethereum, 690 million. Just craziness what's happening right now. Uh, NFTs are all the rage and it's just super exciting to see everything that's going on in the space. Some of it scares me in the sense that, you know, whenever I see anything that's kind of going bubblish, bubblish behavior, it scares me. But you are seeing the bull run. This is the bull run that you've heard in cryptocurrency for the last few years, everyone waiting for. In 2017, you saw a bull run that eventually ended. So a multi-year bear market, 2018 and 19. And that's likely what you're going to see again. You're seeing post having um, bull run, as you saw in 2017, as you saw in 2013. You're seeing it happen now in 2021. And again, my guess is you're going to see a multi-year bear market starting in 2022, 23, and then comes back in 24 for another having another bull run in 2025. So that's what I'm thinking right now. I could be wrong. Of course, I'm just a guy in a suit. If you have any questions or comments, leave it right there in the chat right here as we talk with you about all things crypto and all things stock market. Uh, of course, on the big old show. Great to be here with you. Lovely time as always. Every time I hear the word always, I think of Stevie Wonder. Love Stevie Wonder. All right, so let's go back to the markets. We're going to look at the stock market now, the U.S. stock market, and we're going to see how things are going in the markets. Funny thing about cryptocurrency and the stock market is that you have people who won't, who love crypto and won't touch stocks. You have people who love stocks who won't touch crypto. So it's kind of like, uh, I feel like a mediator of sorts because I get to bring everybody together. And you have people who, uh, you know, you may be one of those people watching right now. They're in at 1767. You might be one of those people saying, dude, NFTs, who cares? Cryptocurrency, who cares? Um, and then you may have people who, as I go to the stock market right now, they're like, oh, crypto's done. Bye. <laughs> it's just so funny how that is. I'm glad that I can be a mediator and I can love on you and love on all things so that you can get information, not just here, but over here. All right, so looking at the U.S. stock market right now. Looks like things are mixed, which we like to see because it shows a healthy market. You're seeing uh, Square up um, close to 2%. Facebook up a uh, percent and a half. Alibaba down about 2%. Everything's pretty steady, Eddie, in the markets. Snap uh, around 62 bucks. My sister's a big uh, proponent of Snap. Overstock up si uh, about 7% today. Very volatile stock, that overstock. But you're seeing a lot of things. Oh, Kodak up above $10 today, 2%. Um, let's see, Dropbox up two percent today. It's just a mixed mixed bag today. Riot blockchain up close to four percent. Uh, Grayscale up two percent today. Some lead stocks grow up four percent today. Uh huh. Just a mixed mixed bag in the stock market today. I'm gonna pull up the S and P five hundred because that right there, gold at seventeen twenty nine. 
that right there, the S&P is very, very interesting to see where it ends up. So March 19th, I think I told you a few episodes ago about how I closed a trade. It was the March 19th strike, 400 spy calls, options trade. And options too, ah, 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 love options. Um, and that 400 strike meant that by March 19th, which is this Friday, you would see the S&P 500 uh, at or above 4,000. So 400 strike, you know, just add a zero, that makes it 4,000. SPY is an ETF uh, for the exchange traded, traded fund for uh, the S&P 500. So I'm still short because I closed that, I bought that option, that call, bought that call option back last May. I bought it last May because you saw the stock market do insane things. And it was insane to me. It made zero sense. And you couldn't pay me to buy a stock at that time because it just didn't make any sense to me. The whole world shut down. People are not making money. People are not working. Companies are not making money, at least not the same way that they were. Why are all these stocks going up exponentially? It made zero sense. So what do you do if you're me? You buy a call option so you can have exposure to the market if it's bullish. And uh, you buy way out of the money. So at the time, I think the S&P 500 was a 3,000. And I was I bought a call saying, okay, if it goes to 4,000, if this is a cheap call, and I'm going to go out to like March of 2021, this is again last May. And I said, okay, if this thing works, I'll do really well. And if it doesn't work, it's not going to really cost me much because this thing is so cheap because it's so far out of the money. It's a 33% off, 1,000 points off. So uh, that call did really, really well all summer. It went up, gosh, it went up like 1,500% or something like that. It's just insane. And um, in September, it, it crested there. And it started to pull back because you saw the S&P pull back as well. You start to see things kind of crater. It was this crazy bull run that needed to sell off. And, um, you know, I was still very, very far ahead of where I had purchased it at. So I was just like, no big deal for me. And um, what I eventually did, because the call, you know, the S&P has been around 3,900. You know, it's been pretty high since. And uh, that 4,000 was looking pretty good, actually. And I sold, took the other side of the position just as insurance. So I sold uh, a put uh, call credit spread. I don't want to get too far into the weeds with you and confuse you. I sold a call credit spread um, on 399 strike call. So basically, um, that would give me 100 bucks if the price stayed below 399 by March 19th. So if it was over 400 by March 19th, winner it was below 399 March 19th, winner. So I did that just as insurance that in case my 400 strike call didn't work, that I would at least make 100 bucks because it would be under the 399. And also, um, you know, if the thing did go through, okay, I lose a hundred bucks on this thing, you know, but it's just insurance. It's just a little extra, little extra scratch to make sure that um, I'm taken care of, that I don't lose, that I'm, it's not like all or nothing, that I'm going to be a winner regardless. So I closed that call, that option call, I sold it off when the market went bonkers about two Mondays ago. I was like, okay, but that call was up like maybe almost 200% that day. I was like, now it's time to get out. And I took profits on that. I made a couple hundred on that. And I kept the short position. So the short position is still open. And I sell that to say to you now, we're going to have a look and see where the S&P 500 is at. So essentially, as long as it stays, as long as the S&P 500 stays below uh, 30, 30, 399, yep, or 3990, as long as it stays below 3990 by the end of this week, we're good to go. So a monthly chart on S&P 500, you're looking at it right now. Let's take a look at the weekly chart. And as we zoom in, we show to you exactly what is happening in the markets. Boom, be boom, be boom. So it looks like today is a bit of a red day. The reason why I'm not breathing too hard on that trade is because you see 39.90 here, you see this Fibonacci resistance. And again, I teach you about this in my course. I teach you how to read all of this stuff 
be able to do all the stuff on your own and be able to pick stocks on your own in my course, yourbitcoinnow.com, yourbitcoinnow.com. Get into one of my courses. You can also uh, learn a few things in my new book, 10 Ways for You to Win the Stock Market. Yeah, it's out now on Amazon, paperback and ebook. So 39.9087 is the resistance here and I'm seeing some pretty strong resistance there. I'm also seeing, if you zoom in here with us, you're seeing that the price has essentially been staying below right here. So I'll just go right there. So 39.59, 39.60 or so has been a strong resistance. You could see us break through that uh, this week, 39.60 we hit last week looks like 39.50 we hit uh, a few weeks ago in February. And this could be the breakout right here. This could be the breakout. Or because last week was such a green week, you might see us pull back and uh, stay below. Let's take a look at the daily chart. This again is the S&P 500. Currently it's 39.41. So it's essentially even for the day. Um, but yeah, I mean, you know, a lot of green days last week bit of a red day today, but not really. I mean, it could go bullish from here, hit maybe 39.70 um, tomorrow, which definitely would seem plausible. I'll take a look at the Heiken Ashi real quick, Heiken Ashi candles. Again, I teach you about this in my course. It shows that we're bullish. Everything's staying in the green, green, green as it moves to the upside. So yeah, it should be very interesting to see how this week goes. We stay below 39.9, so 39.90. As long as you stay below that, I'm a winner. To close the week, by the way, as long as you close the week below 39.90, then I am a winner for the week. Um, and that 100 bucks is mine. <laughs> uh, but as long as we stay above that, like let's say the S&P 500 goes above 4,000 uh, this week, then you'll see, you know, something different happened. I'll be out a hundred bucks, but I won on that other trade. So I'm not crying about it. Uh, that was a pretty good win. It's a really good win. Actually could have made a lot more if I would have closed it back in September, but it was just something I wanted to have just as exposure to what's happening in the markets right now, especially the markets back then, because it was just so insane. So yeah, it's just a jump ball. You know, it looks like the bulls and bears are pretty even here in uh, where they want to go. Um, Again, this is the weekly chart. It looks like we hit a low 39.23 uh, this week. And who knows where we go from here. So let's see what the bulls and the bears can come up with. A couple different stocks. We just want to take a look quickly as we um, get ready to wrap up the show. we got 12 minutes left in the show. If you have any questions or comments, of course, leave it in the chat right here on Twitch. You know that we're live on Clubhouse as well. So shout out to all of you listening in on Clubhouse. Love you for that. Everything is even in the markets for the most part. See GM down 3% today, car company, uh, legacy car company, by the way, um, is pulled back just after a big week last week. In fact, it went overbought last week, opened the week at 54.29, closed at 59. So it was up 10% last week, really big week for GM. Let me just delete that for the next show there. Boom. Yeah, boom. Clean up that chart. What else we have going on? We have uh, Evolve Group up 9% today. I don't remember what Revolve Group is. I have a quick look at what Revolve Group is. What is Revolve Group? Revolve, 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 Revolve. <laughs> uh, Revolve Group stuff. I think one of my students actually put me onto this company. What do they do? They're based in Cerritos. I don't remember who they are. Oh, e-commerce, I guess. E-commerce company. Looking really quick. They're up 9% today. That's the reason why I'm kind of looking into who who they be. Who they be. Who they is. And here's the thing, folks. I know quite a few things about the markets. I don't know everything. I might know more than you. I might know a lot more than you, though. So I want to help you, of course. And jump into one of my courses, and I'll teach you. Teach you a thing or two. Uh, Yahoo Finance, let's see. An e commerce company. It's the one thing that I saw that kind of uh, piqued my interest, my interest. <laughs> it would be funny to see the SP go above 4,000 this week. That would be monumental. And it would be mental. Um, let's see. 
Are we gonna load up? Are we gonna load up? Are we gonna load, 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 load? All right, so let's see, Revolve Group, e-commerce business. Da, 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 da. Yeah, these websites, Yahoo Finance, really dropping the ball here. <laughs> Not giving us much, but it's all good. We love Yahoo Finance for other things. Uh, looks like Snow up 3% today. Yelp up 4%. Uh, yeah, there's a lot happening in the markets. Under Armour up 4% today. So a couple of things. My friends at Planet Fitness up 3% today. I talked with you about Planet Fitness a few times here on the show. Uh, Under Armour, too. Very overbought, which is interesting to see. Uh, let's see. Where's Planet Fitness? Planet Fitness. It's at 82 bucks. A bit of a retrace. Looks like it went up to 90 bucks a few weeks ago. Where I was talking to you about that. Let's retrace the move a little bit. A little bit, a little bit. Look in the monthly chart quickly. You know, red month, but it's healthy. Especially since it's been just being astronomical as of late. Up 4% today, so it's just come up a bit. Macy's, here's a stock that I traded last year. And the thing was like horrible. <laughs> and now I'm seeing a lot of the retail stocks actually come back too, by the way. My gap trade is just going bonkers for noodles. Thing is up to 31 bucks. I started buying it at 12. So yeah, that's going well. You're seeing a lot of retail stocks come back, and it's likely because you're seeing the vaccine thing happening. You know, this is a vaccine trade now where people are saying, okay, well, we were miserable, we were, you know, sad, and now everybody's ready to go back out to stores and get back to normal. So let's see. The last June, Macy's was at. Close the month at about six eighty eight, which is about seven bucks. Now it's a twenty eighty five, up eleven percent today, which is just phenomenal. Uh, Cody, which is the um, I believe they do not fragrances. They might do fragrances too, but they're makeup, makeup, consumer non durables, personal care, up six percent today. A lot of craziness in the market. JetBlue up five percent today. So you're seeing a lot of love for the, and wow, look at that huge breakout above the 50-day moving average. JetBlue doing its ting, boy. I tell you, I remember back, yep, I bought it way back when for seven bucks. And I sold off like maybe at like eight or nine, like I made 20 or 30%. I was cool with it, um, but it's doing well. A lot of the airlines I see doing well. Gold stocks doing well today as well. I want to take a quick look down at the crazy stocks that uh, you and I have looked at over the last few weeks, including da, 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 AMC, which is up 24% today. More madness in AMC. And I see GameStop is at 245, so it's down 7% today. And I see that it came out, came back quite a bit over the last few weeks. It was like at 100 bucks. I remember one of these shows that I was talking with you about. You couldn't t you couldn't pay me to touch GameStop or AMC at this point. I think if you're in and out of it as a trader for the day, it's one thing because you have so many uh, so many humans actually trading it instead of just algorithms. However, in terms of buying it for the long term, no way <laughs> because it's just it's nuts. It's nuts what's happening now. It's just absolutely crazy, crazy. It's crazy to see what's happening, but it's happening. You have NFTs happening. You have everything happening with this. By the way, buy my book. Buy my book. Buy my book, and you'll know everything you need to know. Just want to let you know that. So I'm going to share again the screen so I can show to you AMC and all the madness that's happening right now. So it had a huge, uh, this is the weekly chart. We went overbought. In the beginning of February, hit a high of 17.25, came back down to, well, 570 uh, just a few weeks ago, about a month ago. Now it's 13.80. So I know there's people saying, Hooch, if I would have bought it for 570, ooh, 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 I'd be rich today. Ooh. Yeah, I get it. Uh, it's just gambling to me. So I'm not a fan. Not a fan. <laughs> Uh, GameStop, it looks like, again, just kind of this, you know, 
this bullish trend, which has come back to, which is very interesting to see on the weekly chart. Um, all time high on GameStop, $483. Came down that same week where, um, where AMC was pretty bearish, hit a low 38.50. So, I mean, if you bought it then, you've made a 6x, 6x, 600% return you've made since. And you know what? Shout outs to Wall Street Bets because they've been saying, by the way, buy my book. Buy my book. Buy my book. Buy my book. So I tell you that. Wall Street Bets, they've been saying, hey, keep buying, keep buying, keep buying, keep buying. And I guess they were right because look at where the price is at. Just craziness was happening. Craziness. It's at 245. And again, you couldn't pay me to touch it with the 10 foot pole. Looks like last week it went up to 348. So it looks like the uh, GameStop Bulls are back out to play, but fundamentals are not running this game at all. I will say that there is a Fibonacci uh, support where the price is at right now. Look at the daily chart real quick, right quick. And we're just coming out of overbought. March 10th, hit a low of 172, a high of 348, close at 265. Just just craziness was happening with uh, with GameStop and uh, AMC. And there are many trades like that out there. They're not the trades for me, but they might be the trades for you. Just want to just let you know exactly what's happening out there. And let's look a look. Let's take a look at Gap. This one right here. I teach you about this in my course too, by the way. Daily chart, very overbought, but we're we're loving this right now. We're loving it. We're loving it, loving it, loving it. I mean, look at that. It's nearly overbought. So yeah, the gap is fully broken out here. It's 3280. It's up seven percent today, close to it, and it's just been bullish the last few. So very exciting to see. Uh, again, daily chart very overbought. Have a look at the weekly chart. They still have not released uh, their Kanye West Yeezy supply uh, brand because I know that Yeezy. That's the reason that precipitate part of the reason that precipitated me to get involved in picking up the gap. This was come out in February, and um, you've not heard anything. Obviously, you've seen Kanye West in the news as of late because of the divorce from his wife Kim Kardashian, a celebrity power couple now going. So you're seeing more news about that than about his clothes or his music. Who knows? You're seeing also a lot of retail come back. You see the Macy's trade. You see Coatsy doing well today. You're seeing the Gap doing well over the last few days. So retail's back. And you're seeing retail come back largely because the vaccine is getting propagated. The numbers are going down for COVID-19 around the globe. And as a result, well, at least in the U.S., and as a result, you're seeing Wall Street say, yep, retail's going to come back. It's going to come back hard because people are going to be out there buying again. People are going to be out there in the stores. And that's why you're seeing these things do well. So that is that. If you picked up the gap way back when, when I picked it up at $12, congrats to you. If you've picked it up since then uh, because I'm in it or because of the things you've learned, congrats to you because it's doing really well as of today. Up nearly 2,000% on that. So, uh, or 200%. Sorry. It's a lot of plus eight is right there. Yeah, 200%. Up nearly 200% on that. So, yee. Well, thank you so much for being here today. It's been an amazing show. It's always amazing being here with you. Of course, for all of you who um, ever want to chat to me, you can do that live on Twitch or here on Clubhouse. Every Monday and every Thursday, you and I join up. Uh, welcome back. Last week was amazing doing my ting out in the, um, in, the, in the valleys of California with those beautiful people at Size Seminars. But it's great to be back here with you. Might do a pop-up music style. Might do some DJing music style pop-up this week for you. Just keep your eyes peeled for that. And I will see you this Thursday. Have an amazing Monday. Have an amazing week. And I'll see you soon.